Let me um, uh, first uh, thank all, all of you for being here. Um, today, as you know, uh, the U.S. Supreme Court rendered its decision on a bill that um, you know I started in the assembly, and interestingly, Jody Hicks, uh, who represents CMA now, was the staff person who uh, addressed that uh, particular issue and uh, worked its uh, way through the legislature, and then Randy Hager uh, was one of our allies along the way. So while we've gone um, on to other things, uh, the bill still is a passionate issue for all of us. Uh, unfortunately, the U.S. Supreme Court today rendered its decision uh, negating that particular law in the state of California. Uh, once again, uh, we are um, rather disappointed uh, in that particular decision. Uh, you have the Supreme Court uh, once again siding with corporate America, uh, siding with Walmart against our children and against the people of the state of uh, California. And why do I say that? Uh, if you read the decision of Justice Breyer, uh, he laid it out very clearly. Number one, there's ample evidence to indicate that there are harmful effects to these uh, ultraviolet video games to children. You have legions and legions of studies. He even asked the uh, uh, U.S. Uh, Public Library uh, to look at a um, search uh, within its database of all the different studies that look at this particular issue. And time and time again, and overwhelmingly, there was data upon data that suggests that there is a harmful effect. And in addition to that, uh, reputable uh, organizations of experts, uh, the CMA, uh, the uh, Amer American the Academy of uh, Child Psychiatrists and Pediatrics and uh, American Psychological Association, on and on and on, all of those experts indicate that there is a harmful effect. And so Justice Breyer saw that, got it, and I just have a hard time understanding why the other justice did not get that. In addition, uh, you know, he uh, indicated, Justice Breyer indicated, that uh, you can, in fact, use uh, community standards as a basis of defining uh, what is, in fact, inappropriate, what would fall in the um, uh, realm of these ultraviolet video games. And unfortunately, again, the other justices did not see that. And so because of that particular defeat, you know, games like these are now going to be available uh, for our children. Uh, they can, uh, underage kids, can, in fact, go into a store and purchase these particular uh, games, even though there is scientific data that indicates that these have harmful effects to our children. And that's the reason why uh, we've called this uh, particular press conference to uh, indicate uh, our, our displeasure, um, our disappointment at the U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, when the U.S. Supreme Court is supposed to take care of the people of uh, this country, uh, they have failed miserably, particularly our children, uh, with this uh, particular defeat. And so with this, um, let me um, ask uh, Randy Hager, uh, uh, representing the um, psychiatrist uh, in the state of California, to uh, come by and say something. Hi, my name is Randall Hager. I'm the Government Affairs Director for the California Psychiatric Association. And when uh, uh, Senator Yee, then Assemblyman Yee, had brought this idea to the attention of the Psychiatric Association, we were just um, paying attention to, to a lot of research that was really new and different about the, the plasticity and the, the flexible and, and late maturing nature of the adolescent brain. Um, there's been plenty of research in that area, and um, a lot of our member, members became very concerned as uh, they also became aware not only of this evolution in our thinking about how the adolescent brain matures, but also in the effects of violent videos on, on those uh, children. Um, in particular, uh, I remember thinking that um, the key issue here really um, is that even though the science, uh, in some people's opinion, may not be conclusive, um, it does make it clear that any rational person would want to be prudent and cautious in relation to this issue. So the exposure of children to these kinds of video games is something I think that every parent has an interest in, and we're fairly disappointed um, because of this decision, because it really does leave parents without a tool that they can use to help try to make discriminations. Unfortunately, the, the message I think that the Supreme Court today gave to that parent who is out there who is wondering what to do. Should I be concerned? Should I not be concerned? 
I think the imprimatur of the Supreme Court is on the, on the side of not being concerned, and I think that's a wrongful understanding of, of the, the literature out there. I will also say that I find it very perplexing that the uh, Supreme Court made a decision where it rejected as unfounded all of the, the weight of the evidence that's out there. It didn't need to prove causality. All it had to do to demonstrate an interest, a state interest in this issue was to, was to actually say, okay, the, the correlational studies by themselves, a lesser standard of proof, which is out there in spades, um, says that there is a correlation. And they could have made their decision on that, but they, they decided that they needed to make the, the, the standard um, proof. And there is certainly plenty of evidence that, get, that goes in that direction. But I think they held this, this case, this state, um, this statute to a much higher standard than necessary. So um, with that, I think I'll turn it over to... Sure. Uh, next, uh, let me uh, ask uh, Jody Hicks, uh, who was the staff person that uh, really shepherded this uh, particular bill uh, through uh, the assembly and uh, got it out of uh, the assembly. And uh, with that, Jody Hicks. Thank you, Senator. And this has been quite a journey for me. I was, as the Senator mentioned, I have supported this bill as a staff person. I supported the bill uh, when I worked for the National Organization for Women as a chief lobbyist there because uh, women's groups supported this issue. And now I am over at the California Medical Association and with our colleagues, the psychiatrists and the pediatricians, we support this effort as well. So huge disappointment for me. This has been, um, you know, eight years that I've been working on this with the senator. And let me just say, when I started this, um, getting interested in this issue, my daughter was 13 at the time. And we actually had her go into a Best Buy and try and purchase. At the time, it was Grand Theft Auto was the big um, game. That was the number one selling game there to see if she could, in fact, at 13 years old, and she looked 13, if not younger, um, to purchase the game, and not only was she able to purchase it, the, the um, clerk, who was a, a young man, said to her, this is a great game, nice game, good choice. So I think what the Supreme Court got wrong is they wanted to show this proof that there is a causal correlation that if you play the games, you will in fact become more aggressive or you will in fact do something harmful. And the piece that they missed really was, like I said, this was my 13-year-old daughter who all of her peers were playing this game where these young boys were making choices to beat and harm women in these games or shoot police officers or do these acts of violence where they were making the choice to do it. And, and really, what is the correlation there for our young children? And when we're being uh, brought up in a society, or they're being brought up in a society where the number one selling games are games where we become that this is normal behavior and we're all okay with it. And the Supreme Court said, problem or not, we're not going to make a ruling on whether or not we should step in and say that children shouldn't be able to play these. And so for me, it was really, what does this do for my young daughter in the society where she's growing up with the norm being her peers able to make these choices to really um, have violence against women and viola violence against police officers and all of the things in place that we should all be sending a very strong message that not only do we not think this is okay, um, we don't think it's okay to do virtually either. We don't think it's okay play. We don't think it's okay to, to act like this is norm. And unfortunately it has. And I haven't been involved with the new games that the senator has brought up, but I imagine they're still the, the top selling games. And so that message has been sent. If they're the number one selling game, certainly we've, we've created a society that's made this norm. And uh, it's really unfortunate and, and very disappointing. And I, I do wanna praise the senator for having worked on this issue where at least we're able to talk about it and get the messaging out and hopefully that'll be the some of the end result that is positive as we're bringing awareness to parents and to um, society that that this is not good behavior it's not something we want our children to be doing so thank you let me ask uh, dr jolinda crow who represents the uh, california psychological association thank you senator I'm Dr. Joe Linder Crow. I'm the executive director of the California Psychological Association. And we, um, like the senator and uh, my colleagues here, are very disappointed in the court's decision today. This decision by the U.S. Supreme Court overlooks reams of uh, 
volumes of literature that demonstrates that these violent games do harm to children. We've been very pleased for a long time to support Senator Yee's efforts to protect children, and we were pleased to support this effort as well. Research has shown a causal connection between violent video games and uh, the effects that it has on some children leading to violent behavior. At the very least, we know that these violent video games desensitize children at a very early age to violence, and this, we know, is harmful to our society. In, in the long run. We hope um, that regardless of the Supreme Court's decision today, which again we're very disappointed to see, that the industry has heard this message that Senator Yee has brought forward and that they will do even more to protect children and keep these violent video games out of the hands of our children. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Thank you very much. Let me conclude that um, I, I think as Jody indicated, there is a silver lining uh, in this particular issue, and that is that uh, for the last eight years, there's been a national conversation about these ultraviolet video games. Uh, there has been uh, a lot of uh, articles and uh, reports uh, done on this uh, particular issue. So to that extent, uh, the, the awareness within America about this issue has uh, um, exploded, uh, and that's a good thing. Uh, parents knowing about this issue and hopefully empowering them is a good thing. Uh, the reality is that there have been a number of states uh, throughout this country trying to author a piece of legislation that would ban the sale of these ultraviolet video games to children. Unfortunately, they have not been successful. This is uh, one last uh, try in the, um, that uh, uh, this state has uh, attempted over the years to try and do that, unfortunately. We have uh, uh, not been successful. Uh, there were 11 states that signed an amicus brief saying that we applaud uh, what California is doing. And so this issue is not going to go away. Uh, there may be defeats upon defeats, uh, but uh, we will not go away because the reality is that the technology that is used in these particular games really work. This technology is used by the armed forces, is used by uh, public safety, police departments to train their uh, uh, forces to go after the bad person, to stalk and hunt, to kill and to maim individuals. If it works on these adults, it clearly works on these children, and that's what we are turning our children to be. And so with that, uh, be more than happy to take whatever questions uh, you may have. Senator, yeah. you, you raised uh, Justice Breyer's dissent, um, but the other three judge, uh, justices generally seen as liberal, uh, liberal uh, joined the majority uh, opinion, including all three of them are women. Well, my comment is that uh, you know one, one ought to really look at Justice Breyer's uh, 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 decision, and what the decision that he rendered was that in fact, if you pour through, uh, you know, all of the different data and you look at all the organizations that indicate that there is in fact a, um, a, a high uh, relationship between playing these games and violence, and then secondly. That um, and I think that this is where I think some of the other more maybe liberal judges were uh, uh, thinking th th that is this in fact overbroad? You know, have you really defined exactly what you're talking about in trying to limit? And what Justice Breyer and Justice Alito said is that you look at the community standards. That's the standards that's been used in the past to limit material to children. And they argue uh, in their uh, briefs that you can, in fact, use community standard. I think that that's uh, why the, the, the opinion by Justice Breyer really provides us with a pathway uh, to how we might craft a bill that will sustain a First Amendment challenge. Well, we, we um, uh, just got the opinion this morning. Uh, we are pouring through it, and we will be talking to our partners uh, and, uh, um, and asking for their advice and guidance. And so we will go back to the drawing board on this uh, because, as I said, this issue is not going to go away. There were a number of states that tried to put out a bill. Uh, they were not successful. Um, now uh, we had 11 states that joined us. Uh, in an amicus brief in support our petition to the U.S. Supreme Court. So there's an uh, outcry throughout this country 
about getting something that is out there that can, in fact, sustain a First Amendment test to limit the sale of these ultraviolet video games to our children. Henry, could you talk a little bit about what, what he also said? I mean, you did a pretty good comparison there about the nudity versus the violence comparing it's pretty much the same woman that you, you know, you, you can buy a you know, picture of her, but you know, it's not what, you know, doesn't mean she's killed or whatever, that's, that's, that's okay, but a 13-year-old kid can't you know, buy a book well, I, I think that's the irony of, of um, you know, the decision. You know, I, I just, you know, when you read, when you read uh, um, Justice Scalia's opinion, uh, you know, you, you, you sometimes think that he never heard any of the debate or discussion at the U.S. Supreme Court hearing. I know Jody and I were there, and, and we heard it very, very clear that these games are not the same as movies. These games are not the same as reading a book. You know, if we were talking about violent video games in general, then I could understand his argument and his logic. But these are ultra uh, 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 violent. These are the interactive nature. These are interactive type of games. So you have to do something. And because of whatever you do, then there is a consequent behavior. In books and in movies and in other violent video games, it's a passive activity. So this is, in fact, a very, very special case. It is because of that special case that the data is very, very clear that because you are practicing these kinds of activities, you are learning the behavior that it becomes instilled as part of your behavioral repertoire. It is no different than as I think in some of the anecdotal data uh, where in the Columbine shooting, in the Virginia Tech shooting, these youngsters, they practice these kinds of games. They hone down their skills, and then they actually go out there and carry it out. No, I, I, I don't think, you know, this is over, as I said. Uh, this is a public policy issue. It's really an important kids issue, and we're really talking about taking care and protecting and saving our children. And so with that said, um, you're absolutely correct. I, I mean, when you uh, read um, uh, uh, Justice Alito's, uh, you know, he made a, 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 a number of points as to whether or not, uh, as to where we might be able to come back and to narrow it even more. I thought it was narrow enough, but I guess uh, he didn't think so, and so we're going to look at it and uh, see if there's some avenue for us to uh, move in. I can tell you my main fear was not so much her watching the video games, it was her going to school and being a part of a society where it's become normal for the boys that she's going to school with to play these games. I mean, statistically, it's more boys that are playing the games. Not that, I'm sure that's probably changed in the eight years as they become more and more popular, but they, the attraction at the time was that many, many boys, I think it was 70% of young boys, were playing games such as these. So, so I have this preteen daughter that, uh, you know, has enough to deal with insofar as her um, setting her own identity and self-esteem, where now her peers, it's become normal for them to be part of their play activity to beat and maim women. So, uh, it, like I said, it, it's, it's disappointing that that was not a part of the conversation when we're talking about where the harm is done. Well, I kind of look at the numbers differently. And, you know, there were two individuals who dissented, two individuals who were really not there uh, in terms of supporting it, uh, but they couldn't get the additional votes, and so they went over to the other side. So if you look at the two dissenting, two concurring, you have four votes. You need five. And so I think that there's, there, there's n enough room for maneuvering. I think as, uh, you know, as the reporter indicated, if you look at... Um, Justice uh, Alito's uh, um, uh, uh, brief, you find that uh, he has carved 
a number of different pathways. And I think you should also look at uh, uh, Justice Breyer uh, and some of the arguments that he's made, and we can maybe bustress uh, with, 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 again, data uh, as to you know, how we do have, in fact, conclusive evidence. Maybe we can get more uh, national organizations, other professional organizations to step up to play in support of this. So, so I, I think some of the anecdotal data and other kinds of statistical data may, in fact, uh, persuade uh, one more uh, judge, or we have to wait for another court. But, but again, this issue is just not going to go away. The technology that is instilled in this particular in these particular games is extremely harmful to our children. And if we don't do something about it, you're going to have more and more youngsters who who seek out these types of behavior as a way of dealing with their aggression and their frustration. And that's not a good thing for our society. You at all surprised that, that maybe your path to five justices goes towards through justices with whom you very rarely find agreement? <laughs> well, you, you know, in this business, you get the votes wherever you can. <laughs> you <know. laughs> is it, is it surprising to you that, I mean, these, uh, I mean obviously the, the industry itself knows kind of the, what's in the games because they're raiding them. So, I mean, that, that they wouldn't then apply that to, you know, parents having at least to purchase them instead of the kid that's well, I, you know, I think that's exactly one of the points that was made in the brief, uh, in the decision, uh, in one of the uh, dissenting decisions, that, that, that the, the industry, through its rating, has already made a statement that these games are not appropriate for kids, that you ought not to be selling these games to children. They've made that statement already. They know and they are saying that these are really not appropriate for kids. So it's rather ironic that the industries are already admitting that these are not appropriate for kids, but then you don't want any rule that really says that you can't sell it to kids. So it's just kind of ironic. And, and again, um, you know, I get it, I understand it. I, you know, this is literally um, about a $50 billion industry now. And anything that I can do to capture as large of a, uh, a, a, of a market share is a good thing for my industry. So. I understand why the industry would be opposed to this and why they would like to, in fact, sell it to youngsters. But, you know, we're on this side more interested about protecting our children. You know, they are not simply about market value. They're not about just getting people rich. These are our children, and we've got to do everything we can to take care of them and give them the very best of future. So when your daughter went to buy this, she was 13? She was. And it was a mature rated... It was, and that, that's one of the things that I will um, give credit to the senator, that, that that has changed a little bit. I think if um, a 13-year-old was to go in now, they, they do a better um, job of, of making them show identification than they did when we first started. But, but to your point, I don't want to leave the industry off the hook here. They are rating them, um, but they use this rating system where M is mature, and it says we recommend that you not... Um, sell this to under 17, but then they also have this adult only, which is their stamp of this is really, really bad. They've never rated a game for violence in that adult only until um, we brought one to their attention that had nudity in it. So they, they, they've followed along this Supreme Court and part of our society that says nudity is really, really bad, and we reserve this adult only um, for them. But anything where you're decapitating or um, maiming, that one's just slightly not bad. So when, when a minor does buy a video, is, is, is there rules or regulations or is something being done to take uh, action towards the stores? Or? No, I think th if the senator wants to speak to it, my understanding is it's just policy. So the, the industry itself tried to start self-policing based on the pressure that they were receiving because of the awareness that the senator brought forward. But there is, because it's not a law, it's not against the law, there are no penalties. So, so this any decision is a wake-up call for our parents to be Correct, able. correct. Do you want to no, add that's anything? That's, that's right. There's no penalty. You know, right now, you know, a child, underage child, uh, right now an underage child can in fact go into a store, uh, purchase, uh, you know, one of these, uh, one of these games, and, uh, you know, nothing would happen to that particular clerk, nothing would happen to that particular store. Even though the industry has already rated this game as M, it's not appropriate for kids, but then yet you can still go in there and buy it and uh, nothing happens. So your suggestion to parents out there now after today's decision? 
Well, my suggestion to parents has always been uh, that, that you've got to watch your kids and you've got to uh, know what they're doing. And, and, you know, in these days, it's not easy. I mean, you've got parents who are working two or three jobs. Um, you've got sometimes single parents. Uh, so it's, it's, it's tough. And then on top of that, and this is where the analogy between a movie and a book is so wrong when you compare it to ultra-violent video games. Some of you who have played these games and, and, and know about this pretty well, you cannot get to some of the more atrocious uh, violence until you go ahead and complete uh, low-level violence. It's only when you kind of you know, go and accomplish those lower-level violence that you get to the high level. And so if you're a parent and you're not that sophisticated, you're not going to be able to play, play the game as well as your kids, and therefore you'll never know what's inside this game. The only thing you may read is the descriptor, but sometimes you know, that, that doesn't tell you and give you the full flavor of it. And so oftentimes when you are looking at these games, you really don't know what you're getting yourself into until you play it. And oftentimes parents don't have either the time or the skill to play it so well that you then get the full range of what's going on in these games. Okay? All right, thank you very, very much. Appreciate it.